Hello, I'm Tony Cordato. I'm a real estate lawyer, which means that I look after property transactions such as conveyancing, which is the buying and selling of properties, mortgages, financing, leases, and strata title law. This talk is one of a series called The Keys to Property Investment. And today's topic is four experts give advice on renovating a home unit. You might ask, why renovate? Well, a home unit owner will renovate for their lifestyle, for their enjoyment. A property investor will renovate for higher rents. And both will look for increasing their property values. Let's start with the first expert, Christine, who is a rental property manager. She'll tell us about the four essentials that tenants look for when renting a property these days. And she'll also walk us through a newly renovated home unit. The second is Philip. He's a bathroom wear specialist. And he'll tell us about the features to look for when buying shower fittings, toilets, and basins. The third expert is myself, and Christine and I will talk about budgets and for renovating home units, and she'll tell you why kitchens are the centre of a property and should be renovated before you renovate bathrooms. We'll also talk about return on investment, which is the do how much you get back in rent for each dollar you invest. The fourth expert is David. He's an architect. He'll tell us how he rearranged the layout of this home unit to make it flow better and how he designed features which are very attractive to tenants and owners. I'll finish off by talking about the approvals required for strata renovations. So, let's get started. So, hello, I'm on site in a modern, newly renovated apartment. I'm with Christine Chanfiki, who's the rental property manager, who's kindly invited us in to have a look around this newly renovated home unit. Over to you, Christine. Thanks, Tony. I'm here today to um, show you through a gorgeous renovated apartment. The, um, Owners have done a fantastic job. They've met the criteria because the majority of tenants are looking for a property with obviously built-in wardrobes, air conditioning, ceiling fans falls under that as well, dishwashers and hardwood flooring. They're the four essentials. The four, the four essentials that it's really going to make a property shine against other properties that don't have those things, or maybe one or two out of those four things. And there, are there any additional things that tenants might like? Look, um, definitely um, ample storage. A lot of tenants are working from home, so they need that linen press, the hallway cupboard, um, you know, storage in the laundry, storage in the kitchen just because so many people are working from home. And it's that, that hybrid work home now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you'll take us around the apartment now? I'd love to. We're gonna start with the kitchen in this beautiful renovated apartment. So, as you can see, they've put 20 mil Caesar stone bench tops on, which are fantastic, as opposed to laminate. The plantation shutters, the essential dishwasher, Gorgeous new sink, and I, I love these features with the retractable taps now. Bench tops, gorgeous 
I want a cooktop. And I love the aspect of this apartment that you're just looking out at the greenery. Also, the ample storage that this apartment has. We've got a three door pantry, you know, linen press, whatever you want to call it. It's fantastic. You've got that beautiful kitchen island. You've got a real flow in this area, which leads us into the gorgeous laundry. There's not many laundries where you can leave the door open. It's actually a showpiece. Beautiful new mosaic tiles on the floor, combination washer, dryer. Again, they've carried in the 20 mil Caesar stone bench top with a really nice splashback, the plantation shutters as well. Um, People debate now whether to put a laundry sink in the laundry. I think it's still an absolute must. So do the laundry sink. And again, ample storage over here as well. I here in the shower of the new bathroom that never existed before. This is the main bathroom. This was, where the glass door is to the shower, a WC, where you're located was the hallway. By bumping out a metre and a half, they've created a whole new main bathroom. You've got the beautiful Parisi tapware, mirror, tiling, and this is a double shower. Love the master bedroom. Originally, there are built-in wardrobe here. Ample but they've put in a new wardrobe here as well. So you've got double the wardrobe space. Plus there's thought with people working from home, you've also got your built-in study here. They can double as a dressing table and they've even got that there for your cables with the PowerPoint underneath. So a multitude of um, uses. By putting the wardrobe here, the existing wardrobe, They've still kept the square of the master bedroom. And again, PowerPoint there, PowerPoint over there as well, just to be practical with the configuration, you know, how people are gonna use the space because it is their home. This will be your new tenant's home. And here we are in the ensuite, which used to be the main bathroom. They've opened up the door here, as the door used to be where the shower is. So just that configuration of opening up walls, closing walls, has given you a fantastic ensuite. Beautiful Parisi tapware, tiles, especially the floor tiles, which I love. Again, the flow with the plantation shutters through the whole unit, and I love the storage. You've got the cabinet here, and also under here as well. One can never have enough storage. We have the beautiful hardwood flooring. Then we've got the split system air conditioning in addition to the ceiling fan. Fantastic combination. Cools, heats, you can turn off the split system and then run the ceiling fans for about three to six um, cents a minute. Here we are in the Parisi bathroom wear showroom and we have Philip Parisi the founder about to tell us a little bit about this new range of hand basins that he has in. As you can see the, 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 the shapes and sizes and colours in uh, not only in the taps and toilet but the basins the basin have really come up to a design to meet every requirement uh, and today you can design the bathroom to be an enjoyable area of your home uh, by introducing colours, shapes, sizes and to complement the rest of the bathroom like the taps and, uh, and toilet. Uh, normally these days you can mix and match colours. Uh, uh, and you can mix and match, even as you can see, you can have a bowl one colour and insert a different colour. So it all comes down to personal uh, taste 
and, and, and what you're trying to achieve out of, uh, out of your, your bathroom uh, concept. Uh, here we have basins which are handmade uh, individually and decorated individually. Uh, again, it's something different. Uh, we're finding that they're all accepted in the market uh, to give a bit of life and a bit of colour in, in, your, in your bathrooms and powder rooms, en suites and so on. We, this is the latest designs and colours, which is very fashionable. One, because it's the simplicity of the design, and two, the different colours, especially now that we managed to do the colours, what you call a PVD finish, which will give you the same lifetime as chrome taps, where in the past any coloured finishes, they only would have given you a 12 months warranty, where now with these finishes we can give 15 years of commercial and probably 25 years for residential finishes. And as you can see, the colours are nice, uh, and the designs, very simple, clean to maintain, easy to handle, and we managed to do the colours, and in all inclusive the accessories, the toilet roll holder, the rail, towel rail, shelf, and so on, all matching colours, and that what makes it unique, and, and especially, and as you see, these are the three models that we find that are well accepted in the marketplace. And in uh, whether your houses are modern, traditional, contemporary, uh, it would fit in with that sort of style. We we find that when we designed this particular model, we we did it with the concept that it would have fitted even in a small bathrooms. And these days you find the bathrooms are becoming smaller, especially with for apartments, blocks and all that. And we find that having a compact toilet, easy to clean and easy to install. Uh, this particular toilet, as you can see, is very slim, not bulky, clean. It's got an easy, easy glazing for cleaning. He's got a soft closed seat which closes you know, by, by itself, uh, as you can see. Uh, and it will, and is designed for a, uh, what they call rimless, meaning that you not, do not need to worry about cleaning underneath the rim of the bowl. Can I introduce you to the architect, David Cordato? He'll show us through uh, the design brief and the plans and then the actual renovation. David. Uh, the original brief for this project was to renovate the wet areas uh, with a focus on uh, retaining the four existing walls of the property due to its proximity in a strata block. Uh, the key focus was working out what we could do within these spaces and what was allowed and avail uh, available to us. Uh, with that, the unit's proximity on the ground floor, uh, an elevated ground floor position, allowed it to have additional plumbing works added. Uh, with this, there was also uh, laundry, which needed reworking to modernise it, and the kitchen, which we tied in with the new laundry works. Um, the key changes to the unit were really made in this zone where the doors were removed, new doors were added, as well as additional walls to create two rooms where there was previously one large split bathroom. We have created an ensuite and separate bathroom and where the entry of the main bedroom used to be um, in a larger hallway space, it has been moved into a common hall. Uh, I'll would like to take you through now the unit and show you these spaces. Uh, the first being the laundry. Uh, the laundry was a traditional laundry where we uh, had a sink and uh, laundry area for the, dish uh, for the washing machine and dryer. Um, we embed, instead replaced the tiling, uh, put a built-in kitchen uh, bench to match 
with the kitchen bench out in the rest of the space, as well as uh, additional storage in the side, and uh, a combination washer dryer, as the space didn't allow for a mounted dryer. Uh, in the hallway, we have a, a new doorway here, as well as through to this one being a new wall and doorway position. This doorway enters the now master and or primary uh, bathroom space, with this being where the toilet was previously located and the doorway here. This whole space has been opened up with a doorway here which has now the toilet sitting behind the door in preference thus providing as much amenity as previously was in this space however with the addition of a sink and shower for the second bedroom uh, we had to cut a new doorway in into this hallway space which actually has provided a much better flow of light and airflow to the back of this unit, uh, making this dining area a lot more usable. Uh, this was a pretty minor change which only resulted in the loss of about a half a square metre um, to a metre square uh, in floor space from this room being taken out and as it was being positioned behind the doorway it is minimising its impact on the greater room. Uh, this room had the greatest change due to it being a one bedroom, uh, well, a, a two bedroom unit without a second bathroom. This doorway is completely new, and where I'm standing now was where the bathtub used to sit in the former arrangement. Uh, as you can see, the addition of having a, uh, a vanity unit, toilet, and shower in this space as far greater benefits than the single bathtub would have had. Um, obviously, again, the addition of the toilets was only possible in this style unit and due to its proximity to the ground floor and not having any units or strata units at least below it. So Christine, now we're going to talk about the money. <laughs> we're looking at it from the landlord's point of view. If you were to put a dollar into a property, where would you put your first dollar? Oh, definitely on flooring. Hardwood floors. Tenants no longer want carpet. That's just the reality now. They want hard flooring. It's easy to keep clean. If there's a spill, it's easy to mop up. It's healthier, you know, as far as allergies are concerned and what have you. So I would definitely put my money into flooring first. The other thing, if you had limited budget, would just be to paint. Oh, yeah. Well, it goes hand in hand. If you're going to do flooring, I always say do the painting as well. Because if you do the flooring, the walls will look worse. If you just paint the walls, the flooring will look worse. So if you had a budget anywhere from like two and a half thousand for a really, like say, studio apartment, up to say seven and a half to ten for a large apartment, definitely use that money on your walls and your floors that will freshen everything up and first impressions count. Okay, now if you had a little bit more money, maybe 20,000 or so? Kitchen. Kitchen. Kitchens are the workhorse of any property. Yeah. As I said before, with people working from home, you've got that work home hybrid now. People tend to congregate in kitchens more with open plan. So definitely spend the money there. And then, if you really wanted to do the works, yes. you've got to get onto that terrible room called the bathroom. Definitely. The bathroom and laundry as well. Okay. okay, people don't, oh, laundry. But it adds to the whole scope. If you're going to do the whole apartment, you need walls, floors, kitchens, bathrooms, laundry, basically your wet areas as well. And so if you wanted to do the works, mm -hmm. maybe you've got a budget of 100000 would that be reasonable? Very reasonable, yes. Yeah. And, okay, you're a rental agent. Mm -hmm. um, this was renting before 
the renovations at $565 per week? Yes, correct. And uh, what are you looking for now as a rent? $750 a week. Uh, we've had one open uh, just recently. From that we had uh, six people look through and we've got three applications pending. Okay. So. Well, that's really, really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so roughly $200 per week more than it was unrenovated. Correct. Correct. So if we do the maths, $200 a week, 52 weeks in a year, um, that's... 10400 roughly. Yeah, uh, it's about $10,000 yeah. a year. Yeah, yeah, to round it off, yes. So if I was to put... $100,000 into the property and get $10,000 a year return, mm -hmm. I'd be receiving 10% 10 exactly. return. Exactly. And that's just a little bit better than you can get on a bank, isn't it? <laughs> yes, a lot better a than you can get on a bank. Uh, but some landlords want the money back more quickly than over a 10-year period. Yeah, that, that's not going to happen. You renovate to get a um, bigger return uh, while you're renting. Also, it's going to appreciate, you know, eventually when you want to sell as well, it's going to be a lot more appealing. So therefore, it should equate to more money as well. When you do sell, um, you don't renovate to get, you know, a quick return. Yeah. Well can have a quick return because you've increased the value and you could borrow against the increased value. Yeah, you, you can use the equity in the property and, you know, if, if you want to refinance, go for another loan, mm -hmm. you know, the banks will send a valuer out and it's only going to add more value to the property, which means a, a bigger pool of money as far as tapping into the equity of that property is concerned. Mm -hmm. So you can actually use the equity in order for a deposit to buy another property. That's and then it. you have your portfolio, portfolio, That's portfolio. How you build portfolio. portfolio. Exactly. Properties. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I love I love that I see people in their in their twenties now um, grasp that and by themselves or with a friend or with their partner, they've gone, let's let's pull together, let's get, you know, a foot in the door of the property market and they're smart about it. They're, very smart about just it. Just don't buy, you buy something maybe 30 or 40 years old. Fantastic, yes. You renovate it mm -hmm. and you borrow against the equity that you've created. Exactly. And you're creating wealth. Yeah. You know, you could, you could put 100,000 or 800,000 currently in a term deposit and get 2.5%. You know, as opposed to investing in property, um, which I love, <laughs> as you can tell. But um, yeah, it's a really, really sound investment. Okay. Well, thank you for your time this morning. You're Christine. welcome, Tony. I hope this unit rents out. Yes. Very, uh, very quickly to one of those applicants. Definitely. So to finish off this talk, I'm going to give you a brief outline of the approvals you need from the Owners' Corporation, which is also called the Body Corporate, to carry out work inside a home unit. Well, why do you need approvals? Well, it's because the Owners' Corporation owns the building, which means the walls, the floors, the ceilings, the roof, the entrances, the landscaping, the driveways, the building. They call it the common property. So when you're working on your home unit, you're working inside the four walls in the airspace. You can repaint without needing permission. That's a minor cosmetic work. You can change the light fittings, replace them with ceiling fans, you can change the kitchen cupboards, you can change 
the floor coverings as long as you're replacing carpet with carpet. But you can't do much else. If you wish to do the next level of renovations, which are called minor renovations, you need the approval of the Strata Committee. What approval do you need? Well, you need it if you're installing an air conditioning system. You need it if you're redoing the kitchen. You need it if you're replacing the flooring with hardwood flooring. And you need it if there are recessed light fittings to be replaced. The final level of renovations is major renovations. And these are completely stripping out a bathroom, stripping out a kitchen where retiling or replumbing is required. Also, if you're demolishing a wall internally or changing a doorway, put a new doorway in, closing the existing one. If you wish to change maybe the sliding doors to the balcony with concertina doors, change windows. All these works are major renovations and they require a special resolution of the, of the owner's corporation to create a special bylaw. If you have any doubts, you talk to the strata manager first. So that's enough for me. I hope you've picked up some ideas on renovating a strata unit. And if you wish to have more information, go to my website, which is www.propertyinvestmentlawyer.com.au. Until next time.